Good morning. They must have turned the mic on. Whew, okay, good morning. My name is Jay Pryor, and I'm a lay member of this congregation. It's my joy to be with you to share the message today. My message, the title of my message is Being a Yes to Spirit. So I want to, um, what I always do first, I try to do, what I speak is to remind us of our five unity principles. For me, um, coming to unity and finding this place was really, uh, it gave me access to something new in my life. I've been on a spiritual journey and a spiritual path of loving myself my whole life. If you don't know my story, I was uh, assigned female at birth. I lived for 35 years in the skin of a woman. And then at the age of 35, I started taking testosterone shots that make my body look like this. And recently, I've gone off testosterone. And all of the times that I've gone on testosterone or got off testosterone, I made these pretty intense life decisions. <laughs> I've had a knowing, I've had a knowing that it was the right thing. And when I shared about going off testosterone recently, so many people want to know all the reasons. Like, what are the reasons? Why are you doing this? What's the deal? Right? I can give you a million reasons. I can talk reasons until I'm blue in the face. But the truth is that I have a knowing, right? That I have a, I have a knowing that this is mine. Right, And I am so blessed because at the age of 18 years old, I got slapped in a psychiatric unit uh, my, by my own doing because I was a suicidal human being. But that for me was like the best gift I could have ever gotten at the age of 18 years old because I was I had an opportunity to start doing personal and spiritual development work and started that beginning of understanding what is mine, right? What is mine to do? So as I review these, I want to share, them, share how I have related to them in my life, and especially since I came here. So the first one is that there's only one presence and power active as the universe and as my life, and that's God the good. And for me, this was a revelation for me, right? To have this principle and knowing that if there's only one source in the universe, there's only one substance in the universe and that's good, that also has to be including me because I'm on the universe. <laughs> and until then, even though I had done my best to learn to love myself and everything else, there were still that piece of me that always was disconnected from my God or disconnected from everyone else and I could be alone and I could be undeserving and I could roll around in all that crap <laughs> until I got here and I learned that there's only one presence in the universe and it's good and so therefore it has to be through me, right? And I have to be a part of that. And so I can no longer deny that I can, I can, I can pose false error thoughts about me being undeserving and unworthy, but I know the truth. The truth is that I am part of God, and so therefore, I am good. The next one is that our essence is of God, and therefore we're inherently good, right? This God essence is called the Christ expressed through Jesus, I am. So the first one is that there's only one presence and one power, and the second one reminds us, and that means you too. <laughs> so you can't escape from this. If there's only one presence and one power, it's in you too. The next one I love so much, we're co-creators with God, creating reality through the thoughts held in mind. In other words, I create through my thinking, through the thoughts that I think I create, the reality that I live into. I love that. I had already come from that perspective as a coach, and when I got here, it was like, oh, wait, they're all talking about the same thing. It clicked right in for me. The next one is through prayer and meditation, which I learned to pray and meditate here better than I ever had. I had prayed before, but I didn't understand meditation until I got here. And so, through prayer and meditation, we align our heart and mind with God. Denials and affirmations are tools we use, so we connect. Right? Part of the way we make sure we remember that we're not all that undeserving stuff is that we connect up. Right? And that's how I get to a place of my knowing, is through my connection. Right? I can't get into my knowing without being connected to my source, which I like to call God or the universe. Five is through thoughts, words, actions, we live the truth we know. I live. These are Unity's five basic principles. Now, like I said before, one of my favorite ones that was already part of my world before I got here was number three. But also when I got here, I met somebody who turned into a mentor, friend, sorry, teacher. Um, her name is, ah, uh, sorry, Anola Charity. She's here right now. Um, and Anola was, uh, really loved the science of mind. So if you're not familiar with our work, you're not familiar with Unity, 
you may not know that there's other branches of this type of new thought um, organization, and Science of Mind is one of them. And it's uh, formed by Ernest Holmes, and their principles are similar to ours, right? And their number three principle, watch ours, is number three. We are co-creators with God. I create... I create, this is our number three, we're co-creators with God, creating reality through thoughts held in mind. This is science of mind number three. Creative nature, God thinks, and the world comes into being. I love that. God thinks, and the world comes into being. And likewise, all human accomplishments originate in thought. All human accomplishments originate in thought. All human thinking processes are reflective of the divine creative process in microcosm. Okay, so here's why I love this. Because what we know, what I like to be, is I like to come from a place of spirit and be willing to put myself out there, but I'm also really practical. Right? And I like to have practical like things that make sense to me. Right? And this makes sense to me, especially when you start to figure out the science of human being and how our brains work. Because what we know is that neurons that fire together wire together. And I showed you the slide last time I spoke. Because it's so important. Right? This is your life. Because what you think and how you think about your life is how it goes. And the more you think the same thought over and over and over again, you start to prune your little axioms or pruning dendrites. And you're cutting pathways. Right? So you've had pathways cut in your brain since the time you were little. Right? These are thought patterns that just run on your own. And as you, become, as you get older and you have experiences, some of those pathways serve you. We are people who are wired for survival. So our brains automatically will go to whatever we need to survive, and we will create patterns that help us figure that out. Right? As we get older and start to move through life, some of those old ways of survival don't serve us anymore. Right? And so what happens is, what humans, at least is what's happened to me, is that as I've gotten older and some of those patterns come up that may not serve me, instead of me just looking at them like, oh, I'm a human being and so I have these patterns of survival and now they're not needed so I need to find new ways of being and new ways of doing that. Instead of that, I think, what a piece of crap you are that you can't come up with this, with this new way of being. Like you worthless piece of nothing because you can't think your way out of this, right? I shame myself, <laughs> make myself wrong. I think I should be perfect at figuring all this out. Here's an example. One of the ways that I was wired up Coming into my, my household, I was raised in southeast Kansas, and we were raised in the poorest county in Kansas. And one of the things that I was, I was born in 1966 in southeast Kansas, which basically means I might as well have born in 1956, because we're at least 10 years behind, <laughs> if not 20, um, is that uh, my, da my dad and our family, we were name callers. Right? It, wasn't, it wasn't anything for me as a little bitty kid to be called pretty nasty names. Right? Uh, it comes out of our mouth, just easy. Right? And so something that has come up in my life, and I know when I'm not, I'm really getting off center, is when I, what comes out of my mouth is to call my kid, like get mad and throw a name. And this is fascinating to, sorry, whoa, that got loud. This is fascinating to me because I've never called Jessica a name. Like we don't do that. Right? That pattern did not surface this until I had children. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Right? So here you are doing life, and all of a sudden you have this experience, and then you find yourself behaving in a way that you're like, what the hell? Like, that is not what I'm committed to. <laughs> That's not what I came here for. That's not who I want to be, right? But again, what happens when that shows up is most of the time as humans, instead of just going, oh, that showed up, ooh, <laughs> I might want to do something different, right? Instead of that, we beat ourselves up, we make ourselves wrong, we go into shame spirals, we deal with all that, right? And so part of what I do is I help people figure out, oh, look, that's just a brain pattern. Right? There's nothing wrong here. There's nothing wrong with you because you have that brain pattern. It just is. Now, it may not be workable. We like to come from a place, as a coach, when I work with people, we come from a place of workable and not workable. Never right, wrong, good, or bad. Right? Because if I'm coming from right, wrong, good, or bad, I'm going to shame the hell out of myself on a daily over and over again. Right? Because I'm always screwing up. Okay? And so, 
in my teachings, we come from a place of what's workable, what's not workable. We give up the right, wrong, good, and bad. When we can come up with what's workable and what's not workable, then we can start to figure out what is a workable pattern that I want to create. And guess what? Guess how easy it is? It's fascinating because you already know this stuff. We talked about last time I spoke where if you're a musician, you know that the first time you pick up a guitar, if you're going to learn to play it, you're going to stink at it. Right? And you don't, you know, you know this, right? You're logical enough to know as adults that you aren't going to expect yourself to just pick up a guitar and start playing it, right? However, for some weird reason, when it comes to personal development, we think we should be experts at it right away. By golly, I just learned a new tool. I had an aha moment. So that should make me an expert, right? <laughs> The reality is, <laughs> this stuff takes if much more work, if not, than playing the guitar, right? But it need, you need the same formula for playing the guitar. You need prompts, right? So for playing the guitar, your prompt would be practice, right? You have to practice. You're not going to get good at the guitar unless you practice playing the guitar. You're not going to get good at creating a new neural pattern. You're not going to get good at creating a new pathway, a new thought pattern, unless you practice it. Right, unless you practice it. And so, one of the things that I think is important, to, for me in my life anyway, is being a yes, right, to spirit and being a yes to practicing things that may not always feel like that's the thing I want to do, right? And so, everybody has different ways that they're wired up and everyone has different personalities. So, as a coach, I have this access to personality assessments galore, right? I have lots of coaches that are my friends, and they always want me to take their personality assessments that they use, right? So I've been personality assessed to the nines, okay? <laughs> I know that I'm a 90% extrovert. I know that I'm a quick start on the, on the Colby scale. I know all these things about myself, right, which I think is important. The more you know yourself, the better. I, I encourage you to do that. But one of the things I know about myself is the way I have wired myself up. There's a profile. I did a cult, uh, an assessment called the Culture Index, and there's an archetypal profile in there called the Daredevil. Guess where my profile lines are? <laughs> You might guess that. So I have already wired myself up to be a daredevil, right? And I've always been like that. I'm always the one to jump in first and figure it out later. Right? And so for me, being a yes is not an issue, right? I'm a yes all the time. For me, what I have to learn is to discern. Right? To understand a level of discernment so that I don't just jump in head foot. Now, I will tell you that I would rather, I'm grateful that I have this automatic willingness. At the age of 18 years old, one of the things that I had that I knew, and I learned it very early on, was to be willing. Right? And I have always been willing. I'm always coachable. I'm willing to put myself out there. I'm willing to try. And I'm willing to fail. And see, I have the commitment to skid into the grave all used up, like just fried. Like, I want, I've had my heart broken a million times. I've, you know, I've, I want you to have a life like that. I want you to have your heart broken. I want you to live life big, not some tiny little life where you can say, I've never really experienced much, but I'm here, right? <laughs> it's not fun, okay? You're here. You chose to be here on this planet for a reason. And so how do we know when, how do we know the difference between when ego is like jump in versus it's something we're really supposed to do. Now for me, one of the ways that I have always done this is just say yes and figure it out afterwards, <laughs> which is what Tina Fey says, right? Now this has served me very well in life because I've dived in, got stuck in it, right, and then figured it out, and it's always led me to someplace else that was really amazing, right? But there's also been times that I've jumped in and realized this isn't the thing I wanted to do, <laughs> after all, right? But for me, there's not ever an issue about jumping in. It's about learning discernment and learning to figure out how to get into my own knowing, right? So in the, uh, the course of the last year, this community read uh, some books by Paul Selig, and one of the things that Paul Selig talks about in, the, in their books is understanding that knowing, right? Getting to a place of that knowing. Now, I hang out with a lot of powerful people, and um, I love to learn from them, and I love to learn all the metaphysical tricks and uh, things that I haven't learned about in the past. And I'm a sponge. I just like to learn all that kind of stuff. So recently, in our, uh, one of my 
groups, we were talking about muscle testing. <laughs> My friends were teaching about muscle testing. Muscle testing is a way to ask your body if this is a yes or no for you, right? Because one of the things that they taught me, which I thought was interesting, we're all going to do it. I'm going to have you stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Willing. Stand up. And I want you to get yourself with your feet at a place where you're pretty solid, right? And so they're grounded. And then I just want you to think, just be there grounded, and then think no. Think no. And see where your body goes. No. How many of you felt your body move a particular direction? A couple of you, good. Okay. Now I want you to do the same thing. Think yes. 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 Feel your body move? Yeah. All right. Now, those of you who didn't, you may want to go home and practice this. I don't know. But watch. You can go ahead and sit down. Watch. I've been practicing this since my friends taught me a couple weeks ago. This is how new this is for me. I'm always wanting to talk about and share things I learn. Right? But if I sit here and I, I just go like this and watch my body, I'm thinking, no. No. And then inevitably I'm tipping backwards, right, all the time. Now for me, when I ground myself and I say, yes, I am a yes. See how automatically I move forward. My body pushes me, right? So I've started practicing. This is, my, this is how one of the ways that I know my yes and my no. Right? For me, this is a tool that I can use that's practical that helps me be a yes and a no. If this isn't something that resonates with you, then we have to find other ways for you to figure out what your yes and no is. In terms of coaching, one of the ways that we do that is we have you start out small. Right? We have you start out with things like, what do I want to have for dinner tonight? Right? Because a lot of you, and especially if you're a woman, you have been trained to serve, not deserve. Right? Your whole life, you've been domesticated to serve and not deserve. And so when you start to learn to deserve and to be in alignment with what you want, it's uncomfortable and weird. Right? It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right sometimes. It's, it's like I'm not okay. It's not okay for me to ask for what I want. A lot of you are wired up with that wiring. Right? And so instead, we want to start to practice, right? practice knowing what we want and then, of course, asking for it, because that would be powerful. <laughs> but practicing knowing what you want or what you want to be a yes to. And so sometimes we, get, we hear something, we, get, we feel like we've been called, and you just want to, if you feel like you're being never ever don't, you know, if you feel like you're being called to something, I hope you'll let yourself do it. But I also don't want you to do things that you're not called to, right? And sometimes it means just getting in action and moving so that it, so, you're, so you've got some energy and momentum in one direction. So if you don't know what your yes is, I recommend that you think about things like, do I want Chinese food for dinner? Apparently I don't. Right? So, uh, <laughs> but you can feel when you have a yes, right? You can feel it in your body, but you're the only person that can know what your yes is, right? You're the only one that can tell you that. And all of us are energy, right? We are just, whether you want to believe it or not, this is all a ball, ball, ball of energy. It seems like matter. I'm mostly wave, right? <laughs> so, so, being able to get into your yes is an incredibly powerful place to be. Now, for me, why this matters is because for me, and what I believe about all of you, is that we're here to figure out that we're loved and, that, and, and loving ourselves. Right. I want to live in a world of people who know themselves as loved. Why? Because people who know themselves as loved are kind. Right? When you are behaving as someone who is loved, you're a different person than when you're behaving as someone who is trying to earn love or who needs to, who is unworthy of love. Right? Being a loved person, right? Behaving as someone who is a loved person has you, your, ha, has you a different experience and perspective in life. So that's what I want for you, right? It's what I want for you. But what that takes, just like everything else, is practice. You actually have to practice loving yourself. You actually have to practice getting to a place where you can know and be kind and give yourself grace. I like to practice, I like to study all kinds of different theological people and spiritual people and Abraham uh, Hicks is one of my favorite, that's not really what its name is, but that's what you probably know it by. 
And one of the things that Abraham talks about is that we have an inner being, right? And I love that because that inner being, for me, when I can think of it like that, like it's accessible to me. It is something I can access, is this inner being. And that inner being knows everything you need. That inner being is always seeking for your good. It's the same principle that there's only one substance and one power and presence in the universe, and that's God the source of good, and it's always there, right? So the same concept is that inner being who is always there to really have you know that you're loved, that you're worthy, that you're deserving. Right, and so one of the ways that, that we, one of the tools that we use in Unity is practicing and practicing connection, right? Practicing that knowing. And so if you don't already have a practice where you're practicing, you're taking some time to get in meditation or be still, I want to encourage you to do that. But more importantly, this next couple of weeks, I want to encourage you to practice knowing something and having it come true that's just small. Because moving from big things, like, it's too scary, right? So as we go into meditation, which we're going to do here in a minute, I'm going to ask you to think about, and here's the thing I love about divine mind, and I like that science of mind calls it divine mind, because our brains are fascinating. If you give your brain a puzzle, it will figure it out. <laughs> All you have to do is know the right question. Right? I know, I had a friend of mine recently, one of the things, another assessment, right? I've got, I'm assessed to the nines. Um, another friend of mine did an assessment for me on my, and it's called your motivational map. It's what motivates you, basically. My highest level of motivation is influence, spirit, creation, all this, you know, spiritual stuff, right? And then somewhere in there is making money. <laughs> so so, so my, my spiritual piece is at a 30, and my making money piece is at a 20. And so this friend of mine said, Jay, you're always going to throw making a difference, uh, or throw money under the bus for making a difference. You're just always going to do that. You should just know that about yourself. You're always going to do that. So maybe we need to talk about how you can actually have, like, come up with a way to have value-based coaching so you don't leave people out and you're still in integrity with yourself. Well, nobody ever talked to me about that before, but here's what I know. I still haven't figured that out. But what I know is, is when my brain has access to a question, it will figure out the answer. It will, and all of yours will too if you let it, right? Your brains are fascinating, they're so powerful. If you put a question in there, your brain mixed with your inner being will guide you to the answers, okay? I promise you that's the case. So what I wanna do is invite you to take on Joe Vitale's form of meditation for the next month. So Joe Vitale is a, a, a New Thought author, I call him a New Thought author, a law of attraction author. He talks about how there's different kinds of meditation. And in here, we talked about connecting up to spirit and being still, right? But another way to meditate is to actually visualize what you want, right, in the future and have it be small enough that's attainable, right? So I want all of you, in it, and I know this is going to happen for some of you because as soon as you put an idea in somebody's head, their brain will go, their brain will start to solve it for you. So I want you to think of an area of your life right now where in the next, and a goal in the next 30 days that you can accomplish in that area, and it has to be believable, right? So if you're somebody who's like, finances is an issue, and I wanna make $10,000 this month, and this month I made two, I don't think you're gonna get there, right? That's a big stretch, right? If you can't believe it, you can't have it, right? So it has to be something you believe, right? So I want you to think about that, and when I take you into meditation, I'm gonna have you ponder that, but this is something I want you to meditate on what it would feel like to already have that accomplished. Right? What would it feel like to already have that accomplished in the next 30 days? Something really small. I promise you, if you spend time every day visioning that, in 30 days you'll actually see that that's come to fruition. It will just happen. Be, well, no, that's not true. You have to act on the ideas that you come up with. Right? You have to actually take action and act on the ideas. Here's the thing. One of the reasons I, I was crying before I ever got up here, because um, I want to share this before we go into meditation. I was already crying before I got up here because I was watching Buck play this mandolin. And when I met him, he wasn't doing this as much. And um, I know as a coach, I would like to say that if you're in a quarter of a mile of causing it, claim it. So um, he did my seminar and we worked together and one of the things that he took on was being fully self-expressed in his music, right? Three years later? Yeah, it's almost three years. It's almost three years later. Look what he's, he's up here with a band. And he's attractive, right? 
who's attracted this gorgeous woman into his life who does exactly what he wants to do. I mean, like everything that his life is lined up and got people in it, right? Am I lying? <laughs> no, right? Because he had, he, had a, he had an idea and he had a vision and he was willing to like take baby steps towards it. What happens is if you're willing to take baby steps is in three years, you'd be amazed at what can happen, right? You start attracting to you all these people because his focus started being on what he wanted to create rather than what was wrong with his life. Being a yes is about focusing on what you want your life to look like instead of what it looks like now sometimes. Right? Being a yes is being willing to say, I'm going to be a yes to the activity. Right? We talk about spirit as an activity. Right? It's active. It's an active substance. And I'm telling you that that active substance wants to move through you and wants to make a difference and wants to be expressed and wants you to love people. Right? And if you're not living that, if you're not living big like that, I want you to see if you could be willing to take a baby step towards you being a yes. You being a yes to the activity of spirit moving through you. Now, that is not always easy, right? I say that I'm a yes, and I put myself out there as an activist, as a transgender person, as a person of spirit, as all this stuff, and sometimes it scares the crap out of me, right? There are days when I'm like, God, I can't go lead this. I'm an asshole, right? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Like, what the hell? <laughs> they shouldn't listen to me, right? <laughs> Here's the difference. I know I'm an asshole, <laughs> and <laughs> I know that I make a difference when I'm a yes to the activity of spirit moving through me, yeah, right? Yes. And that as long and the, and the part of the thing that makes me work, right, makes it work, is that I do know that I'm an asshole, <laughs> and I know that that neural pattern that has me be that way isn't doesn't have to always run the day, right? So. I'm going to have uh, Buck come up here with Holly, and here's the thing, they're going to do a song and I'm going to take a break, and here's my request, they know you love them, so you don't need to clap afterwards, because they're going to put you, they're going to do a song that's going to actually bring you into meditation, and then right towards the end of the song, I'm going to come up and we're going to do a meditation, but I, right now we're going to allow them to put you in, right? And part of this meditation, as we're going in, I want you to think about what's that thing you could accomplish, just a baby step thing that you could accomplish that would make you feel amazing, right? And your brain is going to start to work on that as you hear this song. 